Hi folks, I'm Meath with Two Guys to Ride. Today we are doing a how-to video on the 2021 Nissan Altima, and this is the SV trim level. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Mankato Nissan in Mankato, Minnesota. Okay, so on the driver's information screen, you have got a nice large tack over on the left with an engine temperature gauge. And on the far right, you've got a speedometer, of course, with your fuel gauge, and that's all analog. Now, in between, you've got a nice digital screen, and you'll notice that uh, if I use the buttons on the left side of the steering wheel, these four arrows here, the OK button and the back button, I can control everything that's in there. So if you look kind of at the bottom of the screen as I push the right arrow, I'm toggling through some main menus. So you've got about six things that you can toggle through. And anytime you've got something that you can go through extra, it'll give you an uh, up and down line and then you can use your up and down arrow arrows to scroll through them and then you can click OK to select something. So that's how you're going to navigate through the system. So let's go take a look at these. So I'm going to go back to the very beginning here. All right, and this is the home screen. So in the home screen currently, I've got the little double arrow showing up on the far right. So I should have something additional I can use the up and down arrows for. All right, here we go. So uh, I add, uh, looks like uh, average, aver look, it, it does average miles per hour. And then if I scroll down again, it's a calm screen. And if I scroll down again, it's back to my miles per hour along with my media and the title and then the channel that I'm on, which is really kind of nice to have. If I press the right arrow, I will go over to fuel economy. Now in fuel economy, I don't have an up or down arrow. So my up and down arrows will do nothing. I can press the OK button to reset the fuel economy, but that's it on this page. So now I'm going to go to the right again. Okay. And on this page, I get trip information. So for instance, I've got the up and down arrows again. So I've got miles and then I've got a timer. And if I do the down arrow, now it's going to take me to tire pressure. Okay. And I'm going to need to be moving to get a complete readout there. And then I'm going to go down again and it's back to trip. So those two pieces of information, tire pressure, and then basically your, your trip information. All right. I'm going to go more to one more to the right. This is uh, just the media page. And I, if I hit okay, I can go to sources. So here I can go up to AM, FM, Sirius XM, or auxiliary. So if your phone was running via Bluetooth uh, or Apple CarPlay, you know, that, that would possibility would show up there as well. So I'm just going to go to Sirius XM. I'm going to press OK. Um, and the infotainment screen changed. And over here, I get the, uh, the, the Sirius XM display. And now if I use the channel buttons at the bottom of the, le or the left side of the steering wheel here, I can then go through all my presets. And honestly, you can press these skip forward, skip backward channel preset buttons at any time in any screen, and they work. That's why they put them there. They're like a shortcut. Okay, so that's your media screen. I'm going to go one more to the right. Now, in this particular screen here, this is your Pro Pilot Assist uh, area. And if I click on OK, I can go to Menu, and I can have Steering Assist on or off. And when it's off, it just it does the on part and the dot do not glow. Now you see they, the on is lit up in white and there's an orange dot. That means it's on. Okay, so I'm going to go. Um, actually, I'm going to go to the right one more. And this is your settings. Okay, I'm going to go back one more for a minute. On Pro Pilot Assist, if I go over to the right side of the steering wheel and I click the Pro Pilot Assist, everything uh, pops up here. So I've got my, my forward warning volume, my blind spot is on, and, and then I got my gap setter for my fully adaptive stop and go cruise control right there. Okay, and then of course you got your set and resume and your cancel, uh, and that's all tied in with this button right here. All right, I'm gonna go one more to the right. And this is where your settings are. So here I, I can go into any one of these and just click OK. 
and then I can get into some other menus. So we're not going to take a look at all of them, but let's go to driver assistance for a minute. And I'm going to press OK. Here I go. I've got steering assist, and, that, and it's either on or off with the OK button. Using the down arrows, I can go to emergency brake. So there's nothing else in the picture there. So if I click OK, now I can say, do I want emergency brake on in the front and the rear? or say just the rear by turning the front off. So this is where you make all the little choices for your safety systems. Uh, so I'm gonna go back here. All right, that was emergency brake. Let's go to uh, look at lane quick. You can turn lane departure warning on or off. And then that's just the warning part. And then you can do the lane prevention uh, on or off where it actually will turn the wheel for you. I'm going to just uh, hit the back button right here. And then you've got blind spot, parking aids, rear cross traffic alert. And again, that one's just to on or off right here on the screen. You've got a few more things down here. Driver attention alert on or off. That'll warn you if, you, if it thinks you're weaving kind of around the lanes, if you're tired. Timer alert. To set that, you just click OK. And then you can set that for whatever reason uh, that you want to have a timer on. Hit the back button here. Low temperature alert, that'll just alert you when it's getting down to freezing. And then chassis control. Let's click OK on that one. Active trace control can be turned on or off. I'm going to hit the back button here. I'm going to hit the back button one more time because we were in driver assistance. Now you can go down. Do you remember the tire pressure setting we saw earlier? So. Right here is where you change the units, and I just click the OK button. They give you quite a few choices. I'm going to hit the back button here. I'm going to hit the back button one more time. Um, clock. If you want to change the clock, you can do that right from the driver's information uh, screen. You can set it manually, or you can change the clock format right here. Let me go back again. Vehicle settings. Let's click on here and take a look. Um, lighting. Welcome headlight, on or off, auto room lamp, auto headlight, light off delay. These are all pretty much uh, on or off. You can, for the auto headlight, you can say standard, turn on earlier, turn on uh, standard, or turn on later. Here's the thing. When you have auto lamps and they come on at dusk, you may say, you know what, I want my lights coming on before they are. Then you would want to say to, to you know, maybe turn it on earliest or turn it on earlier. If they're coming on too early, you're like, gosh, I don't need my lights on right now. Then you can go on here and say, maybe turn on later. But you do have some options, which is nice. Uh, turn indicator, do you want the, when, when you just kind of touch the switch a little bit, do you want it to give you the three flashes uh, or do you want it to be continuous? It's nice that they give you a choice there. You can, you can go in here and you can look at all sorts of things on locking. Again, you just select the thing you want, press OK. Just remember to hit the back button here. If you happen to hit the arrows, it goes exit out to a whole other screen. Then you got to get back into it. All right. Uh, wipers you can change right here. I'm not going to go through them on, but they can be speed dependent or not speed dependent. Hit the back button here. Rear door alert if you want, if that's open. Uh, remote engine start. You can turn that feature on or off just with the click of the button. If I, and then uh, and then I come back to lighting. So now I'm going to hit this uh, back button right here. That's all under vehicle settings. Now, if you want to take a look at maintenance, you can click there and you can look at the oil control system. And to reset, you'd press OK. Hit the back button, oil and filter. That, there you can set your miles. Miles for oil or miles for filter. So you get a little pop-up warning when it's ready to change. Tire, again, you can have uh, two settings right there. We'll go back. And then other, they just give you an other so you can put in some other type of mileage marker for something else on the car that you think is important to keep track of. Okay, now uh, let's look at customized display. Now, cruise, trans, cruise screen transition on or off, welcome effect, you can uh, adjust that right there light and wiper guidance. All right, down here you can change all your units, okay, just by selecting, uh, for instance, they kind of divide them up. So you got tire pressure is one. We've seen that before, so I'm going to hit back, 
temperature, you have, just to push the button, changes between Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then language, it gives you three different choices. Okay, I'm gonna hit the back button again. Um, you can look at key linked settings here, and then you can do a factory reset right here. A uh, very nice system. Uh, everything you could really possibly want is in there. It's a good, clean display, um, and it's very easy to control. Next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. On the infotainment screen, the screen itself is eight inches. It's a six speaker uh, Nissan uh, sound system. It has uh, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It has Bluetooth, AM and FM. It has Sirius XM as well. So the screen itself is this portion here is just black. So the actual screen is the rectangle that you see, uh, but it's got a crisp screen. Um, you do have a bunch of physical buttons, so you got volume, rotary, and then push to power off. And then you've got a tune and scroll right here. You can see the ch stations changing there. Okay, and then I can click it and I can go right to my uh, sound menu like bass. Click it again, I get mi middle. And then click it again, I get treble. Click it again, I'm back to balance. Left, right, and one more click and I go to fade. And then one more click and I'm back to menu. So nice uh, shortcut. And it does underneath it say push sound. So uh, it is well labeled. All right, you have an, uh, sort of a night light here for your uh, setting your, how bright your screen is. So if I click this and I just use this to scroll, uh, I don't know if you see it on the camera, but it's changing a little bit. It's a little brighter, a little dimmer. If I keep clicking it, I can go from auto to day and I can go from, um, I don't have a choice about night. I guess you have auto or day. Day is just brighter. All right. Over here, you've got a you know, skip forward, skip backwards. You've got an, a dedicated audio button. If I click that, that's going to bring me up. Uh, so I've got all the audio stuff, anything with your phone, AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, USB, settings. Okay. Uh, right now I am in, in uh, Sirius XM, so it brings up that menu. Well, then uh, under menu, you can, it, it brings you kind of to this center screen where you get phone, audio connections, info, and settings. You can scroll one to the left, well, move it to the left, scroll to the right. You can customize the menu. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. And then if you go to the other side, you get your USB connections, uh, AM, FM, all of your audio connections, I should say. All right, next over here, you've got phone. So it's a dedicated button, takes you right to phone. Right now there's no phone connected, so uh, it would just ask you to look at connections, but you can get text messages and all the regular stuff off the phone. Over here, you've got a dedicated uh, camera uh, button here just to bring you right to the, the, the display settings. So I can adjust the brightness, contrast, tint, color, and black level. And all I got to do is click on it. I have to push this first. Then I can adjust that. Now, if I don't want to do that, I can adjust it here. I think, nope, I have to use a plus or minus button. So it might be easier to click on this and then rotate it. All right, you can turn off the, sort of the dynamic guidelines right here. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'll just pop it in reverse for a minute. Okay, so right now I've got these guidelines. So I got the static ones that give you distance, the green, red, and yellow. And then the orange are the dynamic ones. But if I go up here and I say, I want those off and I hit reverse, you see that dynamic swivel is gone. Now I just get the static ones. So personally, I think that's really nice to have those on. And it's beautiful when you're in reverse, you can just quickly click them on or off. Last thing you have over here, of course, is just a back button. Okay, so let's go back to menu for a minute. And let's go back here. And in fact, I'm gonna start with how to customize the screen. So to do that, you're just gonna click where it says customize home menu. Then you've got widgets and shortcuts. So I am going to say, well, right now it's got one right there. I'm gonna want phone to appear right. Let's see, replace. Oh, maybe it's too big. Okay, I got that one. Uh, maybe I want audio. I've already got audio. Hmm. Okay, so that, that's all my selectors. So I'm going to leave that. I have this screen, this screen, and this one. This is the one that I was just setting up. If I go to shortcuts, 
I could say, you know what, I really want Sirius XM right here. And I want FM right there. And I want Bluetooth audio right up there. Oops, I don't want it to replace it. That, that would have replaced it because I drug it over the blue. There I go. Now let's go take a look at it. So I go to menu. Okay, so here it is. So now I've got my Sirius XM up here, my FM and my Bluetooth that I just put in. And down here, instead of having just the clock, I added phone. And there's no connection, so nothing's there. But that's how you customize. So you're gonna, you're gonna notice that now that, because I changed this one to phone, and it used to say customize home screen, you might go, well, once that changes, how do I get it back to customizing the home screen if I don't like it? You just click on settings, and customize home menu is right there. So that's how you get back. Okay, so I kind of like this screen. It gives me what I, what I want, so I would probably leave it there all the time. That's how you customize. Let's talk about the different sources. So I am going to go to uh, audio here, and I'm gonna, we're already in Sirius XM, so I'm gonna stay right here, and let's talk about how to tune and how to save things, how to save a favorite. So to tune, well, the easiest way is just either to use your steering wheel arrows, and you can go back and forth between your favorites, okay? Um, you can go over here and you can hit uh, menu and then you can do it, look at a channel list, a direct tune, uh, you could take an artist, you can take a song and it, and it couldn't be easier. You just go through there and then it say channel list and you say, yep, I want this one and there it is. How do you save a favorite? You just find one of these favorite things you can find an empty one or you can find one that you want to replace, click and hold. And there it goes. It takes a little bit to, to, um, to do it, but it'll save it. It's like uh, maybe an eight second hold. So a little longer than normal, but it works. So that's how you change channels. That's how you save a favorite. Uh, AM and FM are going to be almost exactly the same. So before I go there, I want to show you under settings, even though I've already done it, the sound button here, okay, bass, middle, treb, uh, balance, fade. This is where you can make everything uh, change for your sound menu. If you want to go through the touch screen, you can go here and you can say sound. And now you're going to get them all kind of a one picture. You also get a bass enhancer down here. And if I scroll down, you get speed sensitive volume in addition. Okay, so those things are little additional things that are under sound that you can't get by pushing on this. Okay, so I'm going to go to FM for a minute, and I'm just going to show you that it looks pretty much the same uh, as our SXM. So if I want to select a channel, I go to FM menu, like I went to Sirius menu, and here I go. I can scan, I can look at radio text if I want, and I can refresh. And then anything I want, I just click on, and that's what it goes to. Want to save it? Click and hold. Okay, I'll hit source one more time. I'm going to go to AM, and here we go. Same, same setup, folks. So one of the interesting features that I've discovered on here is that typically your favorites include AM, FM, and uh, Sirius XM. They're all mixed together, okay? In this particular car, they are not. They are actually separated. So in F and when you're in FM radio, you only see FM uh, favorites. When you're in SXM or Sirius XM, you only see Sirius XM and the same frame, which is very interesting. I have not seen that for a long time. Typically they're mixed up, so your favorites are your favorites, are your favorites, are your favorites. It uh, doesn't matter where they come from. Okay. So it's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's certainly not a knock, it's just different. Okay, so that's how you, um, uh, you know, select your different sources. That's how you um, uh, say a set of favorite, and that's how you can tune. So let's move on to the next app. All right, so I'm going to go back here to menu, and I am going to go uh, over here to phone because I haven't set up a phone yet, and I'm going to. So I'm going to hit phone. First thing it does is it gives me a thing for connections. Before I do anything, I'm just going to turn on my phone, 
and I'm going to go right to the Bluetooth settings. Now I'm going to go over here and say add new. And it, right on my phone it now says my Altima so on my Bluetooth. So I'm going to click it. It gives me a number. It says, this, this is, is this the same? Yes. I'm going to hit pair. It does it. It says Nathan's phone is ready for use. Do I, it, and then on my phone it says allow contacts and favorites. I'm going to say don't allow on your car. If it's yours, you click allow because you want your favorites to transfer over. I don't because this isn't my car. All right. Now, you can also do connections for Wi-Fi in USB there if you want. Notice I now get a phone icon, a music icon, and an information icon. If I click on information, okay, I can delete the whole device. Okay? And then it tells me, uh, can I make a call? Yes. Am I have a phone book? No, because I didn't allow it to. Can I send a text? No. Can I receive a text? Nope. Uh, and audio streaming. Now, can you do that other ways? Yes. I have my phone set up so that it doesn't do that. Okay. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to menu. And now, if I go to phone, all these are lit up. And I won't go through them, but these, these are pretty basic. But you got your dial, your number right there. Uh, let's see. You have got uh, your phone book, your quick dial, your call history. Um, if you want your change your volume, you can do an outgoing call volume and a ringtone. Just remember on these, uh, unfortunately, it's not a click drag on the dot. You have to use the plus or minus buttons. There you go. Okay. We were on connections. I'm going to go to info. System information here. You can get your software version, software update, uh, Sirius XM information, license information. Uh, you can do um, auto, and then if you want to do manual, um, then I think you need to save it to a USB device. Otherwise, it does it automatically. All right, let's go backwards. Vehicle data transmission. It says, you know, you wirelessly transmit uh, information back and forth to, between your car and Nissan. Okay to accept or decline. You can read more about that there. All right, so I'm just going to hit back. Then settings. We've already looked at connection. We've already looked at phone. We've already looked at sound. Let's take a look at volumes and beeps. Audio volume. Okay, uh, that'll adjust right here as well with your volume. But if you want to preset it, like I always want my... Uh, Radio volume to be at five or something. You 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 can you can do that. I I, I personally would leave that to zero. But ringtone when your calls come in, how loud do you want that? I'll go and call. Button beeps. You want the buttons to beep when you touch them? It's really more like a drum sound than a beep. But that's where you can turn that on or off. All right, go up here. You can set the clock through here. However, if I just click the clock, it brings me to the same screen. So, and then you can go through and do that. Uh, customize home menu. We've already done that. Customize audio sources. All right. So in this particular screen to customize audio sources, there are two things you can do. One, if you have a lit up icon up here, FM, say USB one that you want to use, you can click hold and drag it down over whatever you want to replace. Secondly, you can rearrange the order of the screen. For instance, I will use SiriusXM before I use anything else. My second go-to is FM, so I'm going to drag that down. Um, I'm, my third choice would be Bluetooth, and the rest I don't care about. So right there, if I go back to menu, okay, and then I go to audio, either there or there, if you look down here, Sirius XM's first, then FM, then Bluetooth audio. That's where the order changes. It does not change up in this screen. It does not change if you go to the home screen and go here. But it does change when you're in the audio screen. Okay, so there you have the ones that you most commonly use. All right, so that's how you customize there. Hit settings again. System voice. This has to do with your voice 
your voice command. Um, so you can turn things on or off here. You got initial voice prompts, short voice prompts, best match lists, voice preference, male or female, okay, and speech rate. So you have some adjustments you can make right to the voice command, uh, and that button's on the uh, bottom of the right hand side of your steering wheel. Okay. Um, let's see, we've done all these ones, so I'm gonna go over one more. We've looked at camera already. That was the button I showed you with those just, uh, little changes. And if I look under others, here's where you can do, uh, look at the display. You can change all these things right here just by clicking on them and making the adjustment with the plus or minus or the rotary. Uh, you can change the language there, the units, the temperature, and we had another spot in the driver's information screen that we could do that. So the last thing I want to show you is Apple CarPlay. Okay, so here's Apple CarPlay, and the way uh, the way that it works is these are your most recent apps that are that have been used. Um, but what I want to point out is this car does not come with navigation. But as long as you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you don't need in car built in car navigation. Um, you can use any navigation from your phone on the car. I've never seen one that doesn't work. Um, in, in this particular case, you know, we have got um, Apple Maps, I've got Google Maps, and I've got uh, Waze. And all three of those work with a, without a problem. Okay? You do have this nice split, uh, nice split screen here. Okay, this, And then you got a home button for your navigation. So when it's operating off your phone, if you just click that, it's just going to take you home. And there we go. Okay. If I want to cancel, I'm going to click up here and click end route. Now, uh, I'm going to show you one other thing, and then I want to show you the cool uh, pass-through feature that goes through to Siri in this case, because I have an iPhone, uh, but it would use Google Assistant as well. If I go back to the apps, okay, I got media here, I got calendar right there, but look at this. I mean, I've got Apple Music, I've got podcast news, Text messages will come in, though. It'll read you the text message. It'll prompt you to reply. I mean, it's, you're not pushing any buttons. You're just listening to Siri give you some voice commands. Um, and Amazon Music, I mean, so if you stream your music and you don't listen to, to, to off a of USB or something, Apple CarPlay is like the thing to have. I wouldn't worry about it not having anything else on it. Um, so anyways, I want to show you this, this cool feature. Using voice command on the steering wheel. A quick, a quick push and release will get you the vehicle's voice command system, but a push and hold for a couple seconds will get you Siri. So let's see how this works. Siri, navigate to McDonald's. Okay, here's what I found. All right, and then I can just click on that one, and here we go. I'm not going to press go, but that's how you could do it. Okay. So, and you can do it to open different apps on your phone too. So if you want to say run Pandora, Siri, open Pandora. And there you go. So that's it for the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen on the 2021 Nissan Altima. And this is the SV trim level. I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching.